Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. Yesterday, there was uh, some things that I said that were misconstrued. And if you want to look up the word construe, look it up. It's in the dictionary. Misconstrued, basically meaning misinterpreted from what I've said. Again, as always, you're thinking with your carnal mind. You're not thinking with the mind of God. Romans 8 says, I guess let me get it up here. Romans 8. Uh, starting here for uh, in 5. For, the, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit The things of the spirit uh, so for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is enemy enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you who are in the flesh, excuse me, but you who are not in the flesh, but are in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit in Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. I know that is so hard to understand for somebody that is carnal minded, that does not have the spirit of God or Christ. Because that's all you think about is worldly things. You don't think about heavenly things. You don't think about how, who and what God really is and how God works especially when it comes to love. Also, I want to read real quick as soon as I find it. Here in uh, John, First John, that is First John, not John, but First John 4 Well, wait a minute, not four. Five, I mean. Actually, four. Yeah, it's four in four, actually. Four is basically the love. The love um, chapter. The love chapter of John to 
two, starting down here with two. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Christ, Jesus Christ came in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Now let me go down here. Beloved, let us love one another for the love of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love has been perfected in us. And of course, the commission of love. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so we, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And then down here, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he hasn't seen? And his, and this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. And see, that's something I talked about yesterday was love. That we need, we need God, Christ, Jesus, and love in America again. And then I was talking about where my pastor's son, well, my pastor and his son, both came to help me out with my plumbing problem again. But evidently you didn't get that part. All you heard me was say about when I had Mr. Reuter here in 2011, shortly after I bought this house trailer. I had him here twice. As you can see right there is the date. Well, let's see here if you can see. 9 27 2011 this was the second time right here is the second time and you can see the receipt here the I mean it's a big humongous receipt they didn't even put on the first part the date when it came but they you know because they wrote down a whole bunch of stuff here Of what they were doing. So the first time it was four hundred and thirty-six dollars and eighteen cents.
but the um, I guess they waived that part and only charged me two hundred ten dollars and fifty nine cents. Well, if you look on the back of this, these these uh, these uh, receipts here is also well, not only what they did, but it's also their contract, their warranty. Their, their terms of service and their warranty is all back here on the back of these um, these papers here. It says limited service warranty. Mr. Reuter, the franchisee, warrants to the extent stated herein the plumbing repair service and drain cleaning service furnished by it the statute period of warranty comp comments upon installation or repair of plumbing or upon cleaning of drains Purchaser understands that Mr. Reuter, the franchisee, liability under this warranty is limited to repair, replacement, um, recleaning, 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 or refund of purchaser's money, and does not extend to the to property damage resulting from drains which become clogged or obstructed or from plumbing work which fails during the agreed upon warranty period. Well, then of course it goes on about notice to owner and there's nothing in here that says anything in here about using Drano or um, any other kind of cleaner, Probably, you know, drain cleaner. Because when they were here the first time, you know, I told them I, there, there was this stuff called liquid plumber left under my sink. And I've used that a few times to the point where, you know, no longer would work anymore. Then when I had to come back again, they charged me another $210. I'm like, why are they charging me again? I thought the service would be under warranty. Because that's what it says there in black and, well, black and yellow. So I contacted my attorneys and... Uh, got to the point where I was going to sue them in court. But then they sent my attorneys this letter explaining in this letter when we came to your home the first time on September 27, 2011 to open your drain, we recommended that you have the hydro scrub done to your line to open the drain and clean out the buildup of grease. After discussing the cost of the repair uh, cable sink service, snake service, which basically um, creates an opening through the center of the blockage in the, in your lines so it can drain and the cost of the hydro scrub which would have completely removed blocker you know basically this is the same thing the hydro scrub is the same thing that my pastor's son did but honestly I don't remember them you know talking to me about that they just came here and snaked out my drain. 
And of course they go on to talk about some other things here as well. Uh, in the beginning here, they were talking about, um, like most homeowners who experience a backup in their drain lines, they use drain cleaners in hopes of a quick and cost-saving fix. Unfortunately, these types of cleaners do not tell you on the label that their products produce a corrosive action within your pipes which weakens the pipes from the inside out over the course of time extended use of these products take their toll on homeowners have to replace their corroded lines well long story short this this piece of pipe right here fell off from underneath my trailer after the first time or maybe the second time not sure which that Mr. Rooter came this is the size of the pipe that I have running from my kitchen to my main drain This pipe right here fell off and was laying underneath my house trailer. Therefore, when uh, the drain was draining, it was actually going and laying underneath my house trailer. I had to eventually basically replace the pipe from my trailer all the way back. They tried to say the reason why that fell off is because of liquid plumber. But everybody has told me, liquid plumber and Drano and stuff like that is not that corrosive enough to eat away, eat away at PVC pipe. Not that corrosive to eat away at PVC pipe. This is PVC pipe. Now if you have steel pipe, the old steel, uh, the steel, you know, um, sewer pipes, yes, it can, you know, cause problems with those lines but not the PVC pipe you see really they were they're just trying to make an excuse really when it came right down to it on why they shouldn't um, keep their end of the warranty up and that's why I hate about these companies and what I hate too is that the guy was supposed to be a Christian, a Mennonite, and he wanted to cheat another Christian that can read and understand really what's going on. My, the Bible says you're not supposed to cheat another Christian. A believer is not supposed to cheat another believer. But there are Christian business owners out there that do cheat other Christians they think they can get away with it but when time comes and they see God actually they see Christ Jesus because they're going to be judged first by Christ Jesus all they get on here well done good and faithful servant or depart from me you worker of lawlessness I you knew you not and then later on be judged by God the Father. Yeah, we've had some tragedies in our country, twice. And now the death toll for El Paso is up to 22. Our lawmakers here in Ohio had uh, stated for what happened here in Ohio that uh, thoughts and prayers are not enough 
basically there's more or less saying or coming out and saying that God and Christ and the Holy Spirit and love is not enough. This is supposed to be in a country that was founded on the, the, the belief in God and Christ Jesus. Now has come down to where Democratic senators no longer wants God in the United States of America. Wake up, Sherrod Brown. Wake up, other Democratic senators. Wake up before it's too late. Because sooner or later you might not be in office if you keep it up. Mark my words. God is still in control, not you. Don't like what I have to say about you? I don't care. You might be here for jobs, but you're not here for the uh, people like me. You think you are, but you're not. If you are, come to my home and prove it. Prove it without a shadow of a doubt. You're, you're from Cleveland. You're close to where I live at. And Rob Portman, I, I saw you, but you, you know, you didn't really say what he was saying. And you all want to blame this all on President Trump. Everything's the president's fault. Well, look around you. Wake up. For once in your sorry lifetimes. And smell the coffee or the roses before it's too late. God have mercy on your souls when the time comes. That goes for everybody that wants to push God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit out of our country. God have mercy on your souls. And for those who do believe and know what I'm talking about, God bless you. Have a blessed day.